Yeah, it's a guy. It's one. One hell of an intro, huh? Anyways, Terraria. It's been a while since my last Terraria video. I wanted to quit, but I actually started missing the game. Now, you'd expect something nice, something chill, when you're coming back to the game after a long break. Let's do Calamity on Legendary Mode! Oh yeah, also let's add Death Mode. Death Mode is a mode added by the Calamity mod, which makes things a lot harder, and Legendary Mode is when you combine Master Mode and the For the Worthy Seed. Now, don't click off. I know a lot of people mistake Calamity Legendary Mode with Calamity on the Zenith Seed, but Calamity Legendary Mode is just Calamity on the For the Worthy Seed. However, I have a proposition. If you really want me to do Calamity on the Zenith Seed, join my Discord community in the description. If the Discord hits 2000 members, I will do Calamity on the Zenith Seed. Currently it's at 1200 members. Again, the server link is in the description. Also if you enjoy this, consider subscribing so I can hit 50k subs. Enough stalling, and let's begin. So I spawn. <laughs> Great start. We already landed in lava. What an amazing start. <sighs> the first thing I did was open my two starter bags. The first one was the Calamity starter bag, which you always get when beginning a Calamity playthrough. But the second one was my own starter bag, which helps me reduce the ground a bit. Then I activated death mode. What? You thought I was only doing legendary mode? Nope. Also by activating death mode, I got these two bars called rage and adrenaline. Rage is filled if you're close to enemies, and activating it will grant you a 35% damage boost for 9 seconds. Adrenaline, on the other hand, only activates in boss fights. And to fill up the bar, you need to not get hit for 30 seconds in a boss fight, and activating it will give you a 200% damage boost for 5 seconds. If you also want to know, the exact world settings is a legendary mode world with the For the Worthy seed on medium on death mode, with the world evil being crimson. I placed my magic sword system down and stored my items. After placing a few insta houses, I got my first step to a slime. Then I went to the left and found a living wood tree, and I mined down from there. I used my two spelunker potions I got from the calamity starter bag in hopes of getting any good loot, and I did manage to find some ores, but ultimately I died to a blue slime that I wasn't even able to see. Of course I tried looting again, but I died again, this time to a red slime. I started working on a mini elevator, but after trying to loot again, I started repeating the cycle of dying over and over again. It felt like I was legit making no progress. I was already starting to tire myself out, but I didn't want to give up only an hour into the playthrough, so I kept trying. And although I kept dying and dying, I at least made some progress each death. Whether it be a bit of ore, a life crystal, I needed anything to help me survive. I managed to make myself silver and tungsten armor using the little ore I had. And after digging down some more, I found a mushroom biome. This was the first big leap of progress, because in legendary mode, mushroom bombs are actually way bigger than normally, so that naturally means more loot, so I scoured the entirety of it. I had more health so I finally made some good progress. Then instead of digging, I went to explore the left side of the world. I found a desert pyramid so I checked it out and I got a magic carpet. Pretty nice. I explored more to the left and I found this tiny hole that naturally looked like an enchanted sword shrine so I dug down. But instead I found the calamity forest shrine. Shrines are located all around the world and they have chests which can give me certain accessories. The forest shrine gives an accessory called the trinket of chi which gives me more damage reduction and more life regen. Certainly not better than the enchanted sword shrine but I'll take it. Then I recalled and went right. I didn't die at all. So I went back into the underground in hopes of finding more loot but even then I didn't get much. So instead I went to the snow bomb to see if I can find some loot. But then 
I remembered that you can craft life crystals in Calamity using rubies, stone, and healing potions. So I did just that and I managed to get much more health. Then I grinded for fallen stars to craft the crystalline, my first weapon. It makes you throw a dagger which splits into more daggers. If you can't tell, I'm going rogue, a new class added by Calamity. Also this was a terrible mistake. After making some more insta houses, I made a small arena, just in case if the Cthulhu randomly spawned. Then I crafted a slime crown and I tried to fight the king slime, but... He's big. He's very big. Oh no. I tried again, because in Calamity, some items don't get consumed. But I still, of course, did nothing. After dying more times, I just gave up for now. So instead, I went to Underground Desert and farmed Antline and Stormline mandibles to craft the Desert Medallion, which summons the Desert Scourge, the first Calamity boss. But before I could craft the medallion, I felt an evil presence watching me, so I got prepared to fight the Eye of Cthulhu, and indeed it spawned. Now the Eye of Cthulhu charges notably faster in Legendary oh, Death Mode. Not only does it also enter its second phase very early, at 75% HP, but it also shoots out these blood spike things. Now yes, I did die, but I somehow managed to get it pretty close to death, so that's awesome. The next morning, I made a platform at the desert, and after finishing up the arena, I summoned the Desert Scourge. Now you know how the King Slime is very big? Well this is the exact opposite. He's small. He's very, very small. And of course I died. At this very moment, I have never contemplated life more. How will I actually beat this? So instead, I went to a crimson and bombed some hearts, since I wanted the goblin army to spawn. While I waited for the goblin army, I made a few houses in the desert for the arms dealer to move in, since I wanted to buy a mini shark for a cheap price. Now you might think the mini shark would be garbage here, but I had a plan, which admittedly didn't work but whatever. Before I could do it though, I felt an evil presence watching me again. So the eye spawned again, and I died again. Or did I? Watch and learn. Well yes, I did die, but I still killed it! I of course equipped the Shield of Cthulhu, then the arms dealer moved in, so I bought the Mini Shark. Then I used glass and grenades to craft flash rounds. The trick that I thought was going to work was using the Mini Shark with flash rounds. Flash rounds basically explode upon impact, dealing more damage to multiple enemies at once. Last time I used flash rounds, it absolutely destroyed every boss. But I think I was tripping because the Goblin Army came and I tried the Mini Shark with flash rounds against them. But it dealt nothing. It was so bad. I don't know if they nerfed it or something, but this was awful. I just used my crystalline against the goblins instead of the mini shark, and after a long time, the goblin army was defeated. After using a bunch of insta houses, I wanted to grind the Eye of Cthulhu for some money, but I somehow died. I don't know why, and I don't know how, even though I already beat this boss. So to try and get max HP, I bought a gravitation potion from the brewer NPC, and I went up to the skies. The main reason was so I could find these planetoids that Calamity adds. Plantoids can contain a lot of good loot, ranging from gems to ores to life crystals, which is what I wanted. But for some reason, Legendary Death Mode makes it so that Cobalt actually spawns in planetoids. I didn't know how I would use it since I can't even mine it yet, but oh boy, this will be insanely useful later. I also found a shiny red balloon. You might be wondering, doesn't For the Worthy make it so that Skyland chests are locked? Well yeah, but Calamity actually undoes that. I don't know why, but I'll take it. I fought the Eye of Cthulhu a few more times for some more money, and I also tried another go at the Desert Scourge, but I did no damage. So stuck in progression, I thought I was already gonna give up. However, remember the Cobalt that spawned in the planetoids? Now of course, we can't mine it. Unless we get a Reaver Shark. But Skeltron, didn't the Reaver Shark get nerfed? Yes it did, but for some ungodly reason, Calamity unnerfed it. I'm not kidding, go look at the Calamity wiki. 
So I went back to the ocean and did a painful amount of fishing until I finally got a reaver shark. So I went back to the skies, mined up the cobalt, made an insivator, then went to the underworld to get a hellforge, and I used that to make cobalt bars. I used the cobalt bars to make cobalt kunais, a rogue weapon, which throws a bouncing dagger. This is supposed to be a hard mode weapon, so naturally this is going to be insane for pre-hard mode. So I went to the desert and summoned up the tiny scourge. Just look at how this thing melts. That was easy. I used the materials I got from the Desert Scourge to make Vic Tide armor. Then I summoned the King Slime, and it also melted before my eyes. Funny thing is, it also summons Rainbow Slimes instead of Normal Slimes. Totally didn't die to those. I wanted to fight the next boss, so I went to the Crimson and crafted the Decapodita Sprout, which is the summon item for the Kravulon boss, and I made my way to the nearest Mushroom Biome. I just summoned Kravulon without any preparations whatsoever, and I kind of just died. It was bigger in legendary mode, and it also dealt a lot more contact damage. I tried a few more times, and yes, I did get closer, but I still died. But then, I came up with a genius idea. What if I use my elevator to fight it? That was fun. I used the Mushroom Plasma Rune I got from Krabulon, which increases Rage Mode by 1 second. Just a reminder, before we continue further, if you like this video so far, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so the algorithm can help recommend this video. I also want to get to 50k subs and I'm starting to get close to that milestone. Also join my Discord in the description, we do fun stuff there. Anyways, back to the video. I made some healing potions since I didn't want to use lesser healing potions, and I made more cobalt knives since I was starting to run out. Also, I crafted a new accessory called the Coin of Deceit. Deceit. I don't know. Deceit. Yeah, it's Deceit. It gives extra rogue critical chance and makes stealth strikes only expend 85% of your max stealth. Oh yeah, I forgot to explain stealth strikes. Stealth strikes are a mechanic for the rogue class, and there's the stealth bar under your player. Not attacking will fill the bar, and if you attack when the bar is full, you do a stealth strike, which is a powered up version of normal attacks for your rogue weapon. Lastly, I upgraded my rocket boots into spectre boots and my blizzard in a bottle into a blizzard in a balloon. Now for the next boss. I bought some vertebrae from a quality of life NPC and I crafted the bloody spine. So I used it, and... That didn't go too well, did it? I tried again, but of course, nothing changed. Let's try fighting it in the underground crimson instead, so it doesn't get enraged. So I made an arena in the underground crimson and summoned the brain again. <sighs> Kept trying, nothing happened. It was just way too fast in legendary death mode. Oh yeah, I also accidentally summoned the perforators. But at one point, I got it to its second phase, and it got to 11% HP. So the next try, I killed it. Good god, finally. So I instantly went back to the surface crimson and waited for a perforator hive. I managed to find one in no time, so I summoned the perforators. I did die, but it wasn't too bad. It was doable. So the next try, I won. The perforators in legendary mode have much more projectiles, and instead of three worms being summoned throughout the fight, there are actually six. The sky is glittering with cyan light. That meant area light ores started spawning in Skylands. I then streamed for a bit, so you guys get to see my live reactions. I went back to the skies and mined area light. Oh, well, there goes the water. 
Mm, so let's just get some aerial lights. We're gonna craft some aerial 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 light armor. I swear I hate harpies. Like I actually who who thought of the idea of harpies? After mining aerial lights, I made aerial light bars and I went back to the skies to grind harpies for harpy feathers since that was in the recipe for aerial light armor. Then I finally made the armor set. Then I ventured to the right of the world and found a dungeon, so I made an arena. Oh no. Uh, let's cancel the event actually. After waiting for night, I summoned up Skeletron. This is either going to go really good or horrible. And it's going to go horrible. God, this is already really bad. This is already... What is he summoning? <laughs> what is... The... You know what, chat? We can try again, right? At one point, I finally managed to get a good attempt in. This is how it went. Long horizontal platform. Works every time. Chat, I'm cooking. Chat, look at those dodges. I can't see. Chat, I can't see. Chat, I can't see. Chat, I can't see. Uh, heal. Let's go! I cooked, chat. So I'm God in all flesh. That's all that's left. So since the next boss was the slime god, I spent a lot of time looking for blighted slimes in the crimson. I have no idea why it took me so long to get a blighted slime, but I used the blighted gel I got from it to craft the overloaded sludge, which summons the slime god. They're small. They're small. They're, <laughs> what? They're small. They're teeny weenies. What is that? Adrenaline. Oh. Oh my god, I swear to god. Instead of trying again, I farmed Eye of Cthulhu's for money to buy 30 stack potions. Then I tried again. You s that core is so big. Like, he's gigantic. How, do how am I dodging all of these? Wait, I'm actually... Chat, am I cracked or no? Yeah, we're good. GG's. GG's. Oh no. Oh! I got very close. So this is how my third attempt went. Please, 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 it's just this one. Let's go! GG's. I used the electrolyte gel pack that dropped from the Sun God, which increases adrenaline mode damage by 15% and damage reduction by 5%. I used the purified gel I got from the Sun God to make Stata gel armor. Now it's time to prepare for the last boss of free hard mode, the Wall of Flesh. So I made the double obsidian insta bridge, an item from the Fargo's Bean mod quality of life mod, and I used that to create an arena in the underworld. And so, I summoned the wall of flesh. Go my child, he's still small. And the imps are spawning. Why are imps spawning? Why is there lava over there? Hello? <laughs> that lava pool was built specifically to block me, what? I tried again, but of course I didn't even come close. Also, I just realized I forgot to enable the wall of fish on texture pack. Sorry. So I decided to end stream so I could focus on beating this boss myself. Since I knew this was gonna be very hard. I went to a dungeon and got a gold key. And I used that to craft a shadow key. In a calamity, you can craft shadow keys. Then I went to the sulfur sea biome. If you guys don't know, the sulfur sea is a new calamity biome. I think you already know if you're watching a legendary mode death mode playthrough though. But below the sulfur sea is the abyss biome. The abyss contains these chests which have some good loot. Eventually I found what I was looking for. The lionfish. A very good rogue weapon which shoots lionfish. How surprising. After reforging it, I tried another fight with the wall of flesh. Of course I did die, but on the plus side, I got it to 48% HP. After trying many more times and still failing, I farmed more eyes for more money so I could reforge all my accessories. Then I crafted a city buster and used that at the underground jungle, as an arena for the queen bee. The main reason I wanted to fight the queen bee was to see if bee nades did anything against the wall. So I summoned the queen bee and I killed it. Uh, wait, what? <clears throat> I killed it. In legendary death mode, the queen bee is faster. That's the only thing I really noticed.
I grinded up more for more V-Nades, and I tried to fight the Wall of Flesh using V-Nades. But that did even worse than my Lionfish. So what was the next solution I had in mind? To upgrade my arena. First off, I added another layer of platforms to the arena. Next, I mined all the ash block that was in the way. It took me a bit of time, but I cleared all the ash block in the arena. Now for the most tedious part. I added campfires, hard lanterns, bass statues, and honey pools across the entire arena. I needed every single buff I could get, and honey was going to be one of the most helpful buffs, since the regen is amazing. I spent a long time doing this, so now I was done preparing. I couldn't even prepare more. I used everything I had. So it was time to finally beat this boss. What, did he actually expect me to beat it? Nope, I'm dead. So I kept trying. I tried again, I tried again, I kept trying, but I just kept dying. It felt like this was really impossible. This was the first boss that made me really consider giving up. But I couldn't give up just yet. One more try. Finally, I entered hard mode. I felt absolute peace, absolute amazement. How did I beat this boss? But if you thought this was hard, oh, you have no idea what's coming next. Now here's the funny part. The instant I beat the wall, I was so happy that I left the game right after, but I forgot to pick up the treasure bag. So I decided to spawn it in myself with my amazing Terraria skills. Anyways, the first thing I wanted to do was of course switch from the rogue class. I absolutely hated it. Also, I streamed for a bit again, so more live reactions. But after upgrading my magic storage system, I went spelunking underground for palladium and cobalt ore. If you're wondering, the calamity ore progression is very different from normal terraria. Instead of getting all three hard mode ores at the start of hard mode, you only get the first tier of hard mode ore, which is cobalt and palladium. Once you defeat the first mech boss, you get mithril and ore calcum. Only once you beat the second mech boss is when you get the third and final tier of hard mode ore, being adamanti and titanium. But after mining enough cobalt and palladium, I made a cobalt pickaxe and made palladium armor. Then I looked for a new biome that was supposed to spawn after hard mode. And no, it's not the Hallowed biome. After enough looking, I found the astral biome. Now, why did I want to go there? Oh, what's it called? Polaris, po Polaris parrotfish, yeah. Let's try getting that. Apparently I need to fish, which is annoying. The Polaris Parrotfish was a weapon that you can only fish up in the Astral Biome, and it was a weapon recommended by a guy called Brutus. Brutus. I'll just say Brutus. Real quick, I'm gonna show a bunch of cool people on screen. I couldn't be Legendary Death Mode without them, because they gave me a bunch of tips that helped me a lot with this mod, so their channels will be in the description. Check them out. So we started fishing, but for some reason, it took me so long. 
Rant alert. Three, two, one, go. This is the reason why I hate fishing. I despise fishing. I hate it with passion. It took me more than half an hour just to get this thing. Why does fishing exist? I got every other item more than twice before this thing. Like, why? Okay, I'm done. Oh, we, we got it. Oh my god. Let's go. Bro, this took so long. This took so long. The Polaris parrotfish just shoots laser projectiles, I guess. I wanted to fight the next boss, so I crafted the gelatin crystal, the summon item for the queen slime. Yeah, the gelatin crystal is also craftable in Calamity. But before we fight the queen slime, I wanted to build a new arena, because of course the arena we have right now isn't gonna cut it for the future bosses. I wanted to make the arena as large as possible, because, well, it's legendary death mode. I needed to make it large. Is this a good spot? Chat, yes or no? Good spot for our gigantic mega large arena? I crafted more city busters and used many of them to make a new arena. <laughs> you see how satisfying this is? Look how satisfying it is. <laughs> After finishing exploding the area, I finally added platforms to the arena. I also had to explode a few sky islands that were in the way. I also grinded more Eye of Cthulhu's to buy the Ultima Cake, a quality of life item that gives me every station buff so I don't have to spend so much time adding the station buffs everywhere. Then I farmed even more Eye of Cthulhu's for, you guessed it, money. I also crafted fairy wings since I forgot I needed wings. Also in Calamity, the Fairy Wings give 60 max HP. After reforging all my new accessories, the last new accessory I crafted for now was the Amalgamated Brain, which gave me a very useful dodge. So, let's summon the Queen Slime. Why is it on the other side? We do some good damage though. Wait, it has 88,000 HP and we're already doing this good damage. All right, GG's. Chat, this was the hardest boss fight. This was so hard. This was actually like so hard, guys, right? Right, chat, right? I was honestly surprised of how easy it was, so that's nice. I bought these snowbound fountains and I placed them in my arena so the area around the arena can turn into a snowbound since I wanted to fight cryogen. Then I got to farming in the snowbound because Calamity adds new enemies there which can drop these materials called Essence of Helium. After getting enough Essence of Helium, I crafted the cryo key and I used that to summon cryogen. God, God, what is that? Hello? There's an ice golem. All right, he has so much damage reduction. I'm getting... <gasps> What is that damage? I ran it back, but I still died. So I actually got warmth potions, since they reduce damage from enemies that freeze us. And I fought Cryogen one more time. GG's. GG's chat. That's Crowgen done. When you kill Crowgen, Cryonicor starts spawning in the snowbomb. However, I can't mine it yet since I need an Orichalcum or Mithril pickaxe to mine it. Then I ended stream for that day. But after that, I didn't stream for a while. So I crafted the mechanical eye and summoned up the twins. This is how it went. My ego is getting very high right now. The first three bosses of hard mode were easy, and I feel like this won't be bad after all. Oh, how wrong I was. Also, since we killed the first mech boss, that means Mithril and Orichalcum spawned into our world. But there is this weapon called the Air Ballast, and apparently, it drops from the twins with a 10% chance. Emphasis on apparently. I farmed the twins to try and get the weapon, and I farmed a lot. I have no idea why it took me like 20 kills just to get this thing. Why? How? When? The Arabellus is a bow that shoots three consecutive times. 
but I also went to the right of the underworld to find the brimstone crack biome, another new calamity biome that spawns in the underworld. I looked for enemies in the brimstone crack since they drop essence of havoc, and I used the essence of havoc to make napalm arrows, a really good arrow paired with the air ballast. After reforging the air ballast, I summoned Skeltron Prime. First try, I swear my ego is at an all time high. Also that meant titanium and adamantite spawned into our world, so I went spelunking for ores, and I crafted a titanium pickaxe. Now remember the cryonic ore that started spawning once we beat cryogen? Well now we can mine it. So I went to a snow bomb and mined up all the cryonic ore I could get. After mining for a while, I converted the ore into bars, and I made the daedalus armor set. I also crafted the ore in a shield, a very good dashing accessory that also gives defense, damage, and health. Then I made seafood and used that to summon the next boss, the aquatic stage. This thing had a lot of health. Maybe I was doing no damage, or maybe it's just that the boss had an insane amount of health, but I died nonetheless. So I made my arena bigger, and of course added honey pools. Then I summoned the scourge again. It took me two more tries, but I finally got the fight down. Aquatic Scourge down. I went straight to the next boss, so I summoned the Destroyer. But for some reason, this fight was actually hard. So to prepare, I went life fruit hunting in the underground jungle. You may be asking, how can I get life fruit before I kill all the mech bosses? Well, Calamity makes it so that life fruit can grow at the start of hard mode. After collecting max life fruit, I went back to fighting the Destroyer. It took me dozens of attempts to actually get this fight down. I have no idea why. I have no idea how. But this was the first boss in hard mode that I actually had trouble with. But after about 40 attempts, I finally beat it. This boss kind of just destroyed my ego. I never thought that the first boss of hard mode to make me have trouble in this playthrough would be the destroyer out of all the bosses. But yeah, that's the three mechs down. I went to mine Clarify in the underground jungle. I also summoned a Blood Moon to get Blood Orbs and new Calamity material that drops from Blood Moon enemies. I used the Blood Orbs to make a Blood Orange, which boosts my max health by 25. After making Honey Pools in the Brimstone Crag, I mined Infernal Suvite, an ore in the Brimstone Crag, and I used that to craft the Charred Idol. Using the charred idol, I summoned the brimstone elemental. The main changes the brimstone elemental had was the fact that she shot projectiles way faster. But other than that, I didn't really know what else was changed, so it only took me a couple of tries to get used to, but eventually I beat him.
I went straight to the next boss and crafted the Eye of Desolation. And at night, I summoned the Calamitous Clone. It was very small, but the fight also always had bullet hell on instead of only specific phases. So that was a really annoying thing to deal with. This fight took me ages. I don't know why it was so hard to deal with. It could have been the bullet hell or how fast the brothers were, but it was insane. Before trying again, I upgraded my boots into angel treads. Then I went back to dying to this stupid boss. I even tried to see if I could beat Plantera first, but she was also a pain. So I went back to trying against the Calamitous Clone, and eventually... This was such a stupid boss, the bullet hell was so annoying. So I instantly went to trying against Plantera, but in phase 2, Plantera actually shoots her tentacles out. And it does so much damage. If you get hit twice by those tentacles, you die. I'm not kidding. I made the Plantera arena bigger just so I could maybe have a better chance at beating the boss. And guess what happened? Yeah, yeah, I still died. So I had no other option. I switched classes to Mage. So I made a weapon called the SHPC, which shoots these explosions that have a very good AoE effect. So it was perfect for destroying Plantera's tentacles. I also crafted the mage version of the Daedalus armor set, as well as many mage accessories. The three accessories I got were the Magnet Flower, the Celestial Emblem, and the Sorcerer Emblem. The Magnet Flower was for the auto mana potion and the extra lowered mana usage, and the Celestial Emblem and Sorcerer Emblem were to increase damage. After reforging the new mage loadout, I tried more Plantera fights with the new mage setup. And although I still died a few times, I was doing way better than before. So eventually, it happened. The next thing I aimed for was to get the snowman cannon, but at the same time, the frostman was going to be hard to beat pre-golem. So I bought some ectoplasm from one of the quality of life NPCs and I used that to craft the naughty present. The next night, I summoned the frostman. I used the battle cry to up the spawn rates and I used the SHPC to kill the enemies. Since the SHPC had amazing AoE, it was really busted for events. I kept killing enemies and eventually the ice queen spawned, but it took me so long to kill it. I didn't even get anything good. I ran out of time, so instead I tried getting the next best weapon, the Hydra. It was very easy to craft. The Hydra is basically just a normal shotgun, but there are Hydra heads that slowly appear when you use the weapon. You can right click to shoot the heads, dealing significant damage. Yeah, I'm going back to Ranger, for now. I of course reforged the Hydra to Unreal, and I also made a Ranger accessory called the Deadshot Brooch, which gives extra range damage and critical strike chance. I wanted to craft another useful new accessory, so I bought all the Ank Charm accessories from one of the Quality of Life NPCs, and I crafted the Ank Shield. I combined the Ank Shield and the Ornate Shield into the Asgard's Veiler, a very good dash accessory that gives you a lot of defense and even health. Then I made an arena at the ocean, and once I finished it, I looked for the question mark NPC that spawns in the ocean. 
I killed it and the Leviathan summoned. I couldn't find any real changes to this boss other than the fact that it had like triple the health and triple the damage and it also spawns way more minions. <sighs> I kept dying, so I summoned the Frost Moon again to have another try at getting the Snowman Cannon. And I actually got it. Wow, I got lucky for once? This is weird. Before actually using the Snowman Cannon, I had to build a Mushroom Bomb and wait for the Truffle to move in so I could buy the Auto Hammer and convert Chlorophyte Bars into Shumite Bars. And I can use the Shumite Bars to make Mini Nukes, the best ammo for the Snowman Cannon. I went back at the Leviathan with my new weapon and yeah, I still died. I upgraded my armor into shroom my armor in hopes of having more damage in defense, and after many attempts, it finally happened. Then I used the Contaminator to spread the Astral Infection into my arena, so I could use my big giant Omega Cool Arena to fight the Space Seal, also known as Astrum Arius, the worst most garbage boss in modded Terraria. If you guys don't know, I despise Astrum Arius. I hate it. Whatever that creature is, I loathe it. Who thought of that garbage boss? Petition to get Astral Jeldon back. I grinded Astral enemies for Stardust, and I used the Stardust to make the Astral Chunk, the summon item for Arius, so I summoned it. It's tiny. It's very tiny. <laughs> look at that stupid baby. That teeny tiny creature can turn my flesh inside out. I'm going to scream till my vocal cords literally combust. The only good part about the Astro Marius boss fight is when he dies. Anyways, I used the Starlight Fuel Cell, which is another permanent upgrade, increasing adrenaline mode damage by 15% and damage reduction by 5%. Then I used the Temple Teleportation Potion, and after I made a proper arena, I summoned Golem. Not only is he tiny, but I can't see anything, and he's so fast. I tried multiple times, but I kept dying. There was just way too much projectiles on screen, so I needed a strategy. What if I fight him outside the temple? Even though he might get enraged, it's still better so the screen isn't cluttered with projectiles. So I made an arena right outside the temple. My plan was to rot of discord outside the temple and into the arena right when I summoned Golem, and just fight him there. So after a few test attempts, I finally won. Then I spent a lot of time farming in the underground jungle, because after Golem, a plague befalls into the jungle, so plague enemies start spawning. I need plague cell canisters, so after farming for a while, I use them to make plague reaper armor. However, it was worse than my shroomite armor, so it was a complete waste. I crafted the abomination and some of the plague bringer goliath. It took me quite a few tries, but honestly, it wasn't that bad.
Then I crafted the abyssal diving gear and went to the abyss to mine scoria ore. Once I got enough scoria ore, I used it to craft the plague tainted SMG. With the plague tainted SMG, you can either shoot bullets that spawn drones on critical hits, or you can right click to fire exploding drones. Then I went to a sunken sea and fought the giant's clam for the Amidius NPC. Yeah, I know. Fighting the giant clam post golem when it was supposed to be fought after the desert scourge? Wow. The reason I wanted the Amidius NPC was because he sold truffle worms. So I tried fighting Fishron and he's fast. He's very fast. I tried more attempts but I still failed. I even tried crafting the recon scope for extra damage but of course I still died. So instead, I tried my luck against the cultist but it was even harder than Fishron. There were so much projectiles on screen so I couldn't do anything. I bought some alcohol buffs from the drunk princess because if I take so much damage anyways, the alcohol buffs outweigh the debuffs. But then, I got an idea. One of the people that were giving me tips, Celeste, gave me the idea to use a very gigantic elevator to kill the cultist. Also using the Heaven Falls Star Disc, a rogue weapon. So before building the very big elevator, I went to a dungeon and found the Astral Bomb chest, which gave me the Heaven Fallen Star Disc, which shoots a Heaven Fallen Star Disc. Yeah, surprising. Using Scoria Ore, I made Hydrothermic Armor, and I made a full switch to the Rogue class. Some Rogue accessories that I got consisted of the Ruin Medallion, Abyssal Mirror, Glove of Precision, and Vampire Talisman, because they all give damage buffs and such to the Rogue class. Then I dug my Elevator for the fight, and yeah, of course the Torch God spawned. But eventually, I completed it. By the way, very big ellipsy warning, you have 3 seconds. I tried this strategy out. Also, you may be wondering why my screen looks very elliptic, but that's because of the odd mushroom. It's a buff that basically gives you 50% extra increased damage, in return for making your screen have many illusions. But it's only useful for this boss because I'm just falling down a elevator, so I don't need to focus on dodging. But with that being said, I died. I didn't do enough damage in time. If only I created a large world instead of a medium world. However, my big brain thought of an amazing strategy. Minecart track. Hear me out. Basically, my elevator is at the right end of the world. What if I made a minecart track across the entire world, then spawn the cultist at the very left of the world using the Edelon tablet? Then I get him to around 65% since if I damage him too much, he would enter phase 2 and invalidate my minecart track. Since his attacks would be fast enough to damage me even with the minecart track. Once I'm at the right end of the world, I recall to the elevator, I can use a bed to do this. Then I use my queen slime mount to go down, and I would be able to kill him with my adrenaline saved up, because he would be already at 65% HP by the time I got to the elevator, it would be enough to kill him. So I tried this strategy out. It took me a few tries to get the strategy down, but I got it. You might say that this is too much cheesing, and yeah I agree, but this is the only boss I fully cheesed, just spare me please. The pillar spawned so I destroyed them all. After the final pillar, Moonlord spawned. And not only are his projectiles faster, but his death laser is 360 degrees. So I spent more tries dying, but I figured it would be better to fight the Empress of Light for the Soaring Insignia. Infinite Flight is amazing, right? I was surprised that the Empress was easy, but also, I completely forgot that Calamity changed the Soaring Insignia from giving infinite flight to just 25% more flight time. Still pretty good, but way worse. Yeah, I also kept dying to Moonlord. So instead, 
Yeah, I switched classes to Mage again. I decided to use the Nebula Blaze as my main weapon, but instead of killing the Moonlord, I thought I should try and kill Fishron first. I wanted to get the Shrimpy Truffle in hopes that would make the Moonlord fight way easier. But even though I got it to 19% HP, I still kept dying. The last phase was such a pain to deal with. I tried fighting Moonlord, I also died. This was the point where I was truly... stuck. I was stuck. I kept dying to Fishron, and I kept dying to Moonlord. But there had to be some way. That's when I realized... Heart statues. Heart statues can drop only a limited amount of hearts, so they can't just heal you forever. So it's not too cheesy, but they'll certainly help. So I crafted a bunch of heart statues, which were very expensive to craft since they needed 6 life crystals per statue, and I placed them around my Duke Fishrun arena. After wiring them, I got back to fighting Fishrun. I kept dying, but at least I was doing better. I even killed Astrum Deus just to see if anything from that fight could help me. Oh yeah, I'm not really gonna show a montage of this fight because I melted it using Rogue. But I still kept dying to fish run. But just as I was starting to be in despair, this happened. Now, I finally had access to the Shrimpy Truffle, which will hopefully help against Moonlord. So I summon Moonlord when it rains, and just watch. Okay, I knew the Shrimpy Truffle was going to help against Moonlord, but I didn't know it would straight up carry me. This fight became so easy with it. But now that we entered the post-Moonlord stay of the game, things are about to become excruciatingly painful. I made Luminite Bars and made a Solar Flare Pickaxe. Then I mined these big clusters of Exodium and Luminite in the sky. These clusters spawn after Moonlord, and they're a better, less grindy way of getting Luminite. And you also get Exodium clusters from them, which is a material for lots of items later in the game. After mining enough Exodium clusters and Luminite, I made Solar Armor. Melee seemed like a good class for now, so I'm gonna switch classes for probably the 17th time. This time, to Melee. With the many options it had, it was bound to be a good class. In terms of my weapon, I set my eyes on the Elemental Lance, since it looked good on paper. On paper? But hold on a minute. To craft the Elemental Lance, you need the Terra Lance, which is a hard mode spear. Take a close look at the recipe of the Terra Lance. Dark Lance. Let me repeat that one more time. Dark Lance. Remember the fact that we made an arena in the underworld? That destroyed every building in its way? Dark Lances are from Shadow Chests. From the underworld. You could get the Dark Lands from Hellstone Crates though, which are obtained from lava fishing. So at first, I prepared to go lava fishing. But I managed to somehow find Shadow Chests at the very bottom of the underworld. And I somehow got a Dark Lance from one of the chests. This is a miracle, at least I don't have to fish. So after crafting the Galacta Singularities, which are made from all four Celestial Fragments, I finally made the Elemental Lance. But, it was bad. The Elemental Lance basically shoots a projectile that slowly splits into more projectiles as it travels, dealing more damage. 
but it was so hard to hit with. Yes, it did good damage, but if it was hard to hit with, how was it going to be useful? I didn't think too much of this at first, but I'll notice how bad the weapon was later. Then I just crafted a bunch of melee accessories. I'll go through them all. First, I crafted Solar Wings. Calamity makes it so that Solar Wings buff melee damage by about 7%, as well as buffing critical strike chance by 3%. Next, the Fire Gauntlet. It was just for more melee damage and speed. Lastly, for melee accessories, I crafted the Celestial Shell for even more buffs. I also crafted the Deific Amulet. It's not a melee accessory, but it can be used for all classes, as it reduces healing potion cooldown to 45 seconds, as well as giving even more immune time. The very last accessory I started using was the community, and it gives buffs to basically every stat, and how much you're buffed depends on how much bosses you've killed. So it won't buff you at all if you haven't killed any bosses, but it'll give you very good buffs if you have killed many bosses. So after doing some more reforging, I used the exotic pheromone to summon the dragon folly. You know how I talked about the elemental lance being bad? Well this was the point where I realized how garbage it was, so instead I just crafted the elemental shiv, which shoots... Blazer. Projectile. Things. That. Home. After a few deaths, I crafted the Eye of Magnus because it reduces the damage reduction of enemies by 50%, so naturally it was an amazing support weapon. Then I fought Dragon Folly again, and I won. Overall, the Dragon Folly wasn't a bad experience, it just had a ton of health, but it was fine. A 5 out of 10 in the difficulty scale. I then went to Underworld to grind the new profane enemies that started spawning after Moonlord, because they drop a material called Unholy Essence. I used the Unholy Essence to craft the Profane Shard, and I went back to Underworld and summoned the Profane Guardians. Yes, I died. There wasn't really anything to upgrade to fight this boss, so I just had to keep trying over and over again. The Profane Guardians wasn't all that different. I think they were just faster, did more damage, and had more health. The Profane Guardians were okay, I guess. Took me a lot of attempts but was still doable. I'd say a 6 out of 10 in the difficulty scale. The Profane Guardians dropped the Profane Core, which is used to summon the next boss, Providence. Also check out this funny little thing that dropped from the Profane Guardians. Cool, am I right? So I went back to Underworld and got prepared to summon Providence, but nothing could have prepared me for what's next. See, in Legendary mode, bosses are usually changed a lot, right? For Providence, I thought it would be the usual, maybe an increase in health, an increase in speed, etc. What I didn't know was that it would become a child. See, I was expecting to fight Providence, not its fetus. So I died over and over. So I added an extra layer of obsidian insta bridges just for more space. And at one point, I managed to get the boss to 13% HP. So I was starting to get close to beating it, but I still just couldn't beat it. So I had to resort to my last solution. Switching classes for the 35th time, let's go! This time to Summoner. Apparently, Summoner deals amazing damage to Providence, so I wanted to try Summoner out. I just switched to Stardust Armor. I used a bunch of Summoner accessories that give me more minion slots and Summoner damage buffs, and I used the Kaleidoscope as my main whip, with the Flowers of Mortality, Wither Blossom Staff, and Tactical Plague Engine being my main source of damage. So I tried the Providence fight again, and I was right. Summoner was doing way more damage. But, of course, 
I still died. So I had to resort to switching from fighting Providence in the underworld to fighting her in the hallowed biome. In case if you didn't know, Providence isn't just able to be summoned in the underworld, it's also able to be summoned in the hallowed. Those are the only two biomes where you can summon her. I just used hallowed water fountains to turn the arena into a hallowed biome and I fought Providence again. Oh yeah, I also started using binoculars whenever she did that annoying sparkle attack. That attack was insanely fast and hard to dodge, but the binoculars helped so much with seeing the projectiles. So yeah, big brain move by me. At one point, I got her to 6.7% HP, so I knew it was a matter of time before I beat it. So eventually... A difficult fight indeed. The attacks were very fast, so it was hard to deal with, but the binoculars carried, as well as Summoner class just being an absolute goat. Probably an 8.5 out of 10 in terms of difficulty. Also after Providence, Bloodstone starts dropping from enemies in the Brimstone Crag. Providence dropped the Rune of Koss, which will be used to summon the three sentinels. I started using Elysian Wings, which dropped from Providence. After farming enemies in the Brimstone Crag for Bloodstone, I went to a dungeon and found the Forsaken Archive. The Forsaken Archive is a big, giant space in the dungeon, and it's supposed to help you fight the Seasless Void and Poltergast, two bosses that we're gonna fight later. I also crafted the Profane Soul Artifact, an accessory that gives me three mini Profane Guardians. The Healer Guardian heals me for 15 HP every 5 seconds, the Defensive Guardian gives me a shield which can take 25 damage and it takes about 5 seconds to regenerate, and the Offensive Guardian rapidly dashes at enemies and gives me an extra minion slot. I grinded the new dungeon enemies that appeared after Moonlord because they can drop Phantoplasm, and I combined the Phantoplasm with Bloodstone to craft Bloodstone Cores which I used to craft the Dragon Blood Disgorger. The Dragon Blood Disgorger summons a family of dragons, I think. I also crafted the Righteous Dawn. If you guys didn't know, I installed the Calamity Whips mod, and the Righteous Dawn is one of the new whips added by the Calamity Whips mod. After reforging for the 10th time, I went to space and used the Rune of Cost there to summon the Stormweaver, the first sentinel of the Devourer. Why does this always happen? Also a cool thing I found out. It's off topic, but basically Calamity adds a new bandit town NPC, and if you click the refund option, the bandits will give you a fifth of the money you've spent on reforges. But yeah, I kept dying to Stormweaver, 
In normal Calamity, to damage the Stormweaver in the first phase, you have to target its tail, but once it enters the second phase, you can damage it anywhere. However, in Legendary Death Mode, even in phase 2, you can still only damage it in its tail. I just decided on skipping it since the Sentinels aren't as important as the main bosses. So instead, I went back to the Underworld and used the Rune of Cost there to summon Cygnus, the second Sentinel of the Devourer. In terms of the Cygnus fight in Legendary Death Mode, your screen is way darker and Cygnus also shoots way more projectiles, I think. At this point, I don't even know if I'm getting these changes right or not. Even though I still died, it was at least better than fighting the Stormweaver. So after a while, Cygnus fell. I don't really have much to say about this fight. The fact that Summoner dealt so much damage made it way easier. Cygnus is probably a 3 out of 10 in the difficulty scale. I still didn't want to fight the Stormweaver, so I went to a dungeon and used the Rune of Cost there to summon the Ceaseless Void, the third and final Sentinel. Now, let me tell you what Ceaseless Void is like in Legendary Death Mode. Take the normal Ceaseless Void. Make it have about triple the orbs. Make it have triple the speed. Oh yeah, also triple the damage. That's what this fight is. I hated it. It was even worse than Stormweaver. I'll just skip it like Stormweaver. Look, these are just the Sentinels. If they were actual main bosses, I wouldn't skip them. So instead, I opted to fight the next boss, Poltergast. To summon it, you need to kill 30 Phantom Spirits in the dungeon. So I did just that. And the ghost thing spawned, also known as Poltergast. I died because I wasn't prepared for when he'd spawn. So I used Phantoplasm to craft the Necroplasmic Beacon, since it was easier than killing 30 Phantom Spirits just to summon Poltergast once. So the next try, I did it! But then, I thought of an idea. What if I used the Underworld as my arena for Poltergast? Now, you might think that Poltergast would get enraged, but nope. Poltergast only enrages on the surface, so you can technically fight it anywhere in the underground. And the Underworld was perfect. Wait, why did he spawn? That's Poltergast down. After I implemented the Underworld strategy, Poltergast became a cakewalk, so 3 out of 10 in the difficulty scale. I used the Ecto Heart, which dropped from Poltergast. It gives another 15% increase to adrenaline mode damage and a 5% increase to damage reduction. I also made the Varied Vanguard, a summon weapon that summons these swords which attack the enemy, and I made the Unrelenting Torment, another whip by the Calamity Whips mod. Now, here's the thing, there is this weapon called the Stellar Taurus Staff, a summoner weapon that I wanted. However, to craft it, you need armored shells, which drop from the Stormweaver. So as a last chance, I tried fighting the Stormweaver one more time, but I just dealt too little damage. At one point I did get it to 47%, but the last phase was just impossible. So I switched back to melee and used a weapon called the Terror Blade, dropped by Poltergast. Not the Terror Blade, the Terror Blade. The Terror Blade just shoots out these projectile things. And that did nothing against the Stormweaver, so I just recalled and decided the summoner weapon wasn't worth beating that stupid boss. So instead, I crafted the Cosmic Worm, used to summon the Devourer of Gods. So I tried the fight, and... Oh god, he's big. But I got him to 76%. For a first try, that's actually really good. I destroyed more Skylands that were in the way, and I fought the Devourer again, managing to get it to its second phase. And just look at how big this guy is in his second phase. How am I gonna beat this? I made the Elderberry for another 25 max HP, so I fought Providence again, this time in the Underworld, because I didn't actually get the Elysian Aegis since I fought it in the Howled Biome. The Elysian Aegis is a very good dash accessory, which is way better than my Asgard's Veiler. To get the 
Elysian Ages, you need to kill Providence in the Underworld, not the Howled Biome. And yeah, don't mind that, but eventually I got the Aegis. I tried finding the Devourer with a Summoner loadout, that didn't work. I switched classes again. I know, I know, why am I switching classes so much? I was originally planning to stick to one class, but at this point that wasn't gonna cut it, since I needed the best possible option for the next boss. But this time, I switched to Ranger, and I used a weapon called the Haley's Inferno. The Haley's Inferno uses gel as ammo, and it kind of just shoots gel. I reforged the weapon and more deaths in two. I even added a new strategy to the fight. I built a house with a bed right under my arena, and it also had heart statues. Whenever I was low, or I was getting cornered by the devourer, I could recall back and also get healed. It wasn't something cheesy in my eyes, but it still really helped. For the next few tries, I streamed. This is the last time I streamed the playthrough, so buckle up. Just make sure to not get hit by the head. Oh no. No! Now do on death mode? I'm already on death mode, you fool. <laughs> I dashed, hello? That was a mistake. Oh, did you guys see that? <laughs> he was literally about to hit me. <laughs> well, we're going to die anyways, but you know what? Guys, are you watching? Watch this. I'm gonna die. I'm going to die. Oh my god, I'm so good at this game. Who said I was gonna die? Like, actually, if you... If you said I was, I'm gonna die, then you, you're actually, I'm gonna die. I'm, I'm actually so bad at this game. Bro, I'm so good. Bro, do you guys see my strats? I'm gonna die. <laughs> I died many times, but at my final attempt in the stream. Let's go! <laughs> GG's. <laughs> I'm shaking. Let's go! Oh my god. Ugh. GG's chat. 5 minutes 49 seconds. God. The Devourer of Gods was a very hard boss in Legendary Death Mode, clocking in at 80 attempts. The fact that its movement was so unpredictable compared to normal Calamity's Devourer of Gods threw me off, so I'm giving this a 9 out of 10 in the difficulty scale. The Devourer dropped Cosmolite Bars, a new material used to craft many new weapons and such. After the Devourer, I grinded the Pumpkin Moon, Frost Moon, and Solar Eclipse. After the Devourer is defeated, those events respectively drop Nightmare Fuel, Endothermic Energy, and Dark Sun Fragments. Using those three materials, I crafted Ascendant Spirit Essence. Using Cosmolite Bars, I crafted the Fangasm, the weapon I'm gonna use for Yaron. The Fangasm is an upgrade to the Phantasm, and I also used Cosmolite Bars to craft Vanquisher Arrows, the arrows I'm gonna use with the Fangasm. The new armor set I crafted was the Godslayer armor set. The Godslayer armor set not only gives amazing buffs, but also allows you to use a new ability called the Godslayer Dash, which makes you dash a very long distance, with a 45 second cooldown. For my accessories, I crafted the Sponge, the Asgardian Aegis, and the Silver Wings. The Sponge gives you a barrier that grants 30 defense and 10% more damage reduction, and the barrier can also absorb up to 180 damage. If the barrier is broken, it takes 15 seconds to recharge it completely. The Asgardian Aegis is a combination of the Asgard's Valor and Elysian Aegis, being a very good dash that also gives more max life in defense, and the Silver Wings are just a new pair of 
wings that have a very high amount of flight time. So I crafted the blessed phoenix egg and used it to summon Yaron. So you know how Yaron spawns these pillars and if you get out he enrages and one shots you? Well those pillars in legendary death mode are way closer to each other. But even with that being said, this fight was actually really easy. I wasn't having any trouble at all until the second phase. I'm not gonna say anything, just watch. What the heck? Yaron spawns a dragon folly. Oh wait, you didn't hear me? Hold on. Yaron spawns a dragon folly. Oh wait, wait, wait. Let me repeat that one more time. Yaron spawns a dragon folly. Said dragon folly also does over 500 damage to you. I thought it was over for me. I thought I was done for. But then I got an idea. What if I despawn the dragon folly? If the dragon folly despawns if you get too far, but Yaron doesn't, I could use teleportation potions to despawn the dragon folly. Then I can use recall potions to go back to the arena and fight Yaron normally. Now the dragon folly does respawn when Yaron is in range, but again, that's only when he's in range. So we can still get a bit of damage in before the dragon folly respawns. I tried this strategy out, and this happened. At the end of the day, I still died to the Dragon Folly, but who cares, I still won. Yaron would have been impossible without the strategy, but it became pretty easy once the strategy was in play, so I'll give it a 5 out of 10 in the difficulty scale. Now to upgrade. I went into the underground and mined up the new Auric Ore that spawned after Yaron, and I converted the ore into bars. For my armor set, I made the Auric Tesla armor, the final armor set before the two final bosses. The only new accessory I crafted was the Rampart of Deities, an upgrade to the Deific Amulet. Then I waited for a while. I was using Draydon Power Cell Factories to get Draydon Power Cells. I needed the Draydon Power Cells to decrypt schematics using the Codebreaker, and the more schematics I decrypted, the more I could upgrade the Codebreaker. And after upgrading it fully, I got a new button called the Contact Button. Before I used the Contact Button, I crafted the Tyranny's End and the Anomaly's Nano Gun. The Tyranny's End is a gun with a very slow fire rate, however dealing amazing damage. And the Anomaly's Nano Gun shoots plasma beams when left clicking, and it launches bombs when right clicking. So I pressed the Contact Button, and Draydon appeared. He made me choose what Exomech to fight first, and I chose Eris. Ares. Ares. How do I pronounce this thing? After I got Eris to 70% HP, the other two Exomechs spawned, being Artemis and Apollo, as well as Thanatos. Naturally I died, what did you expect? In Legendary Death Mode, the Exomechs were faster, had more health, and did so much damage to me. I'm not kidding, some attacks can do like 700 damage. So instead of the Tyranny's End, I used the Dragon's Breath, a weapon that was dropped from Yaron. It seemed better than the Tyranny's End, but I just couldn't beat them. I was doing way too low damage. So I switched classes for the final time. 
to Summoner again. I got the Devourer's Maw, Staff of the Mechworm, Mirror of Calendra, and Pole Warper. The Devourer's Maw is from the Calamity Whips mod. The Staff of the Mechworm summons a mini Devourer of Gods, and it's dropped from the Devourer of Gods. The Mirror of Calendra allows you to summon 5 ancient weapons that attack the enemy, and the Pole Warper summons these things that attack the enemy. I don't know what they are. So I summoned the XOMX once more, and I was doing way more damage than before. Watch this. The Exomex were way easier with the Summoner class, but it was still a painful fight to deal with, an easy 7 out of 10. The Exomex dropped a new accessory called the Dreadon's Heart. The Dreadon's Heart gives a lot of defense, as well as replacing your Adrenaline Bar with a Nano Machines Bar. The Nano Machines Bar, unlike Adrenaline, doesn't get drained when you get hit in a boss fight. But once the bar fills up, instead of giving you way more damage, it heals you 360 HP. So I made the Altar of the Accursed, and I went to my arena, placing the Altar of the Accursed. Once I used Ashes of Calamity on it, the final boss, Supreme Calamitous, spawned. In Legendary Death Mode, the Bullet Hells had way more projectiles. Supreme Calamitous herself is also buffed with the usual, just having more damage, health, and speed. In one of my attempts, I legit got her to 1% HP. So, this happened.
Supreme Calamitous, the final boss, defeated. It wasn't hard for me because I had Exomech gear, but still a great fight nonetheless. The difficulty was a 6 out of 10 for me, but yeah, that's it for this video. Now some of you might think, where is the post Supreme Calamitous content? Why don't you do boss rush? I'm gonna be real here, I was absolutely tired when I beat Supreme Calamitous, I didn't want to play anymore. Boss rush isn't really that important anyways, right? But yeah, this playthrough was really painful, clocking in at 50 hours and 942 deaths. This video took me way longer to edit than my usual videos. I wanted to make this video special because of the fact that it's my first Terraria video in 2 months. So instead of the runtime being 45 minutes like my usual videos, I made it an hour and 30 minutes. The editing quality is also way better, so I'm really proud of this video. Am I coming back to Terraria? Yeah, but I might upload other game videos on the side. Again, if you want to see me do Calamity on the Zenith Seed, join my Discord server in the description. It's at 1200 members, so we only need 800 members till we hit the goal. That's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, and see ya!